Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And And this this is the Insider Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. Beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. All right, Kat, so how'd your weekend go this week? Delightfully (laughs) quiet. (laughs) I'll bet. After after the Pirate Festival, like two weeks back, and then the Film Festival a, a week back, I was just like, I just want to sleep. (laughs) <laughs> Just one a day and or two. I, ooh, I went to bed around like 7 o'clock last night and oh. slept until like 7 o'clock the next morning, yeah. and it was so good. Oh, it yeah. It so good. Yeah. You just hung out. It was cool this weekend. Mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. It was needed. It was definitely needed. I don't blame you because <laughs> yeah. like we were talking about just before we got on the air, you you know, Chrissy and you, and uh, you know, doing them double teaming the Pirate Festival then, going to the <laughs> Wild River Film Festival, and it was like, whew, okay, gals. <laughs> Youth is not wasted on the young. That's oh, for sure. No, it's no. good to, <laughs> Worked for you guys. That's great. But yeah, I don't blame you at all. I'm sure. Yeah, it was good. I ended up doing the Bodacious Bazaar. We yes. had that going on this weekend. You know, it was um, it was kind of a overcast and everything. Mm-hmm. A little chilly, willy. People showed up and everything like that. We had a few vendors. We had not as many as normal, but I mean, geez, we've been doing events and having things going, and then the weather was a little weird. And then because of the fires, we mm-hmm. lost some of the vendors too. Didn't want to come out down mm-hmm. and everything like that. So real bad on that dealing with that still. But uh, yeah, it was it was a. It was a good day, though. It was a good Saturday. It didn't rain on us or anything like that, so that was nice, which we would have welcomed them when it rained the other night. When it rained and came down, I was sitting there going, man, you know what? I will not be upset if it rains today, if Thursday it did it, and then going, I said, if it rains Friday and Saturday, we're good because we need the rain. The firemen need the rain. Bring it. It would be nice to cancel because of rain, you know, is what I was saying. Alas, so if it did, but it, it didn't. was brief yeah, and brought some more thunder with it. Yeah, that's a bummer. It brought the thunder with it. But boy, it came down pretty hard. I hope it helped out a little bit out there because I know I could smell the smoke the next day big time because the fire's going out, you know, and everything like that. I guess bringing the smoke. So, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, we got that still going on. Hopefully, they'll get a curb on that. But pretty much that's it. Did the Bodacious Bazaar and then hung out and did nothing. I got a guy still catching up from the Pirate Festival for crying out loud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we got a few more things going on that we'll talk about as it gets closer. We got one more bazaar and then at Oktoberfest at the end of September. Mm-hmm. And there's quite a few events going on in September, yeah. actually. So Yeah, and actually speaking of the fires, I just want to like jump in real quick, yeah. too. I've been talking with the people over at Brookings Harbor Community Helpers. And of course, there are people who've been displaced by the fire. Del Nord's been dealing with power outages. And mm-hmm. right now, they've told me as of this weekend, they're most requested items besides non-perishable shelf-stable food for people is blankets, it's flashlights, and batteries and fuel for them as well. So if you can spare any of that, go on down to their office on Hemlock Street. They're accepting donations and and people are in need of them right now. Yeah, we've got a a search and rescue uh, thing bulletin where people can donate too. Yeah, I've got it in here and one of our items will be popping up here when we're talking during the show. So that's really cool. Absolutely. Hope everybody got out and did something this weekend. I hope you're not getting too bad affected by the fires and everything like that. And like I said, we hope that ends soon. And uh, yeah, we can get this stuff back to normal. I was just discussing how we we have our fair share of disasters going on every year, you know, one thing or another, one after another. So it's like, yeah, small town, but you yep, still got that stuff that affects, you know. So yep, it's magic here, but hey. Sometimes we get a little bit of disasters too in mm-hmm. the action. So, mm-hmm. but I like the way everybody comes together, and that's really groovy. You know, the cities all come together, and everybody helps out. So, yeah, it's always good. So, well, we're going to get on with the show here. We got a guest here as well. So, before we go, I'd like to thank Trike City Dispensary and the Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaways. Just the Jeweler and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor one of our other fine shows or the Insider Report. All you have to do is go to kciw.org, and you will be on your way. And speaking of the castaways, we've got our favorite castaway on board here, Mr. Dave Keen. He's going to tell us the fishing report. That's right. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Kat. Good to be here I'm once again. Seeing you catching some stuff on Facebook, I, this man. This is You've true. Been it's crazy. been a while since yeah. I've been in here Woo. because I've been fishing a lot. I've been seeing it, too. Yeah. <laughs> you caught yeah. a beauty the other day. For, yeah. I know. I did a trifecta. I had got actually more than that. I got uh, my big salmon on Friday on the Rogue River. Got a lingcod, a lot of lingcod and rockfish on Saturday. And then yesterday, caught my 34-pound halibut. So Yay. I'm on a roll. Just for the halibut. Good, he's just for the halibut, yeah. <laughs> he's on a roll. Cool. But speaking of what uh, you guys were co- talking about, Kat mentioned about like donations and people that are mm-hmm. in need. 
I was approached this morning by Henry Johnson for Fred Meyer, uh-huh. and uh, and he asked if our fishing club might be interested in going on a protein donation uh, blitz, uh, so we could go into our freezers and find some of the fish and things that we maybe we haven't eaten lately. Oh yeah, and donate. Uh, protein to the Gasky victims. Oh, uh, that'd be cool. That need yeah. food. So yeah. I think we're going to do that. Uh, that's good. I think that'd that's be a, great. a good yeah. cause. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's You're right. rotating pretty good anyways. Yeah. You're yeah, right. Yeah, so I need yeah, room in my freezer now. Some room in there anyways <laughs> for crown. In, in, in a good way, <laughs> right? Yeah, in a good way. Yeah. So, so speaking of what's uh, going on out in the ocean, uh, there is no Chinook season. That's still a no-no right. for our area, but the coho is open until Friday. So on Thursday at midnight, coho season does close off our coast. Wow. Mm-hmm. But uh, there are other things to be uh, able to catch. Halibut is open until October 31st. That's Pacific halibut. The California halibut are now showing up along our beaches, off of Sport Haven, down at the Windchuck. For those who troll shallow, maybe 20 feet of water or less along the beach, and but uh, they're there to be caught. Oh, right. And you can keep up to 25 of those a day. Uh, California halibut. Well, they got a tan or something. I know they got sun, <laughs> you know, sunglasses. California, I think they got they're, a little they're, better they're tan the than ones the other halibut. Sunglasses and have a good tan. <laughs> but so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, bottom fish is wide open. The right rockfish, on. lingcod, cabazon. Um, let's see, crab is still open, so that's good. And we were talking earlier in the uh, before the show started about how California has actually yeah. closed down everything. Mm. I mean, they just recently closed now their bottom fishing, so nothing is uh, open in California this year. That's like unheard of. But what it does, it does push people our way Uh as we are open. And uh, our ground fish is being monitored really well. We're going to finish the season. We won't have any reductions in our quotas to the end of the year, which is good because we do take care of our our numbers as best we can. Yep. So I commend ODFW for that. Uh, Let's see. I think... I think I'm forgetting something. You should ask me a question. Well, have you got? Yeah. <laughs> well, you've got a meeting coming up or anything? I know you guys are. There's something you emailed me about something you had guys. Oh doing yes, that. yeah, yes. Our next club meeting is September 20th, so it'll be the third Wednesday of the month, like normal, 5:30 p.m. at the Checko Library. Okay. And oh, I remember. I remember now. Yeah. September 1st. Even though we're closed for Chinook, beginning September 1st, you'll be able to keep a Chinook. A wild coho or a hatchery coho north of Humbug Mountain in the ocean. So all of September, th- those three things will be open. So that that's where I'm going to head in September to go be able to have an opportunity to get a Chinook and some some more coho. Once you see Humbug Mountain, yep, north, you're good to you're go. Good to go. All right, that's well, right. There you go. Hey, yeah, cool. So that's the plan anyway. Oh, that's a whole plan. <laughs> good deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you're going to be out there fishing some more. So good deal. And uh, yeah, if anybody wants to help with that drive, is there anybody they can contact? With the drive for the fish for the Gasky people? Yeah, let's see. Let's put me on the spot. That, well, I, I'm a contact, of course. I'm just saying, is there yeah, some, uh, just but, anybody that But Henry, uh, all we need to do is show up to the customer service desk at Fred Meyer okay. and just say, hey, I'm bringing in uh, food, protein, frozen food okay. for uh, the Gasky, and Henry will take care of it. Well, there you go. He's That's got all the nice. freezer space go. already open for, for collecting it. So we just answered that question. We right did. There. Beautiful. Right. <laughs> Always good to have you on board there, Dave. And uh, yeah, one of these days we'll catch you out in the boat again, man. Hey, okay. Right I'll, on the water. <laughs> all right. We'll do that for sure. Thanks, Bruce. All right. Pleasure take care. Cat. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Happy fishing. All right. Well, it's always good to have Dave on board. Come telling us all about the fishing going on. Boy, crazy, huh? The California thing and all that good stuff. Are they closed down? Mm, yeah. Boy, that's... But hey, there's hope north of Humbug. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hope north of Humbug. <laughs> <laughs> name of a movie or something. Isn't it? Right. All right. So, hey, let's get going with the music report here. Absolutely. We've got stuff coming up in September. To start things off, the Brothers Reed, a folk, bluegrass, and Americana band, are playing on the 1st of September. They're going to be at the Brookings Elks Lodge at 7 p.m. Yeah, and then we got Banjo Steve and Tiger Lily. Wow. wow. They'll be playing Wednesdays at Latitude 42 from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah, and we've got a schedule here for Cisco and Daltrey. They're playing on the 2nd at the Checo Activity Center from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then on the 13th and the 27th, again, they're going to be at the Checo Activity Center playing from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And then on the 16th, they'll be at the Star of the Sea Church Picnic. That's running from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Yes, indeedy. And then we've got the Tony Land Band on the 10th. They're opening for Diane Kai. It's a Maui fundraiser at the Checo Grange at 4 p.m. Then on the 16th, there'll be a Kuntai, 6 to 8. 
And then on the 24th, they'll be doing Stage Light 70 Showcase at the Checo Grange, 2.30 p.m. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And Black GTO is playing on the 29th and the 30th of September at the Elk Valley Casino. Music starts at 7.30 p.m. Yep, and then Disturbing the Peace on the 23rd, they'll be at Chetco Brewing, 6 p.m. And then we've got some events here with the Elk Valley Casino. This is going to happen in the Betty Green Event Center. On the 2nd, it's going to be Bad Miller at 8 p.m. On the 9th, it's Comedy for a Cause with comedian Kermit Appio. Benefit and auction for Coastal Hospice. That's going to be at 8 p.m. And then on the 16th, it's going to be Alien Ant Farm playing with opening band Snickle Fritz at 7 p.m. And then at their Warriors Bar and Grill on the 1st and the 2nd, they'll host Cut It Like the Kings at 7.30. On the 8th and the 9th, Mike Powell at 7.30. On the 15th and the 16th, it's Jesse Mead at 7.30. On the 22nd and 23rd, Steve Nelson will play at 7.30. And then again on the 29th and 30th, it's going to be Black GTO. Music starts at 7.30. Yeah, there was a trend going there with the 7.30. <laughs> like that. That's cool. Hey, and then Ranch Party, they'll be playing on the 8th and the 9th at Kuntai, 6 p.m. And then on the 24th, you can catch them at Chetco Grange. Daniel and Mark, fabulous 70s tribute. So they'll be at that tribute as well, 2.30 p.m. All right. And then for Chris Capitano, he's playing every Friday at Zola's on the Water. Music there runs from 5.30 to 8.30. On Sundays, he's playing at Tortuga Mexican Restaurant with the Green Trees from 4 to 7. And on Mondays, they're back at Zola's on the Water. Music then runs from 6 to 9 p.m. Yeah, and then you catch Michael Powell on the 8th and the 9th. He'll be at Elk Valley Casino at 7.30. And then on the 15th, he'll be at Checo Brewing, 6 to 8. All right, and the Mighty Steelheads are going to be playing at Inateca in Crescent City on the 1st of September. That's at 8 p.m. On the 3rd, they'll be at the Blackberry Festival in Klamath Park at 1 p.m., on the 9th, they'll be at Turtle Rock and Grass Muse Fest. They play at 12.15. And also on the 9th, they'll be at Porta Pints in Crescent City at 8 p.m. Yes, indeedy. And then the Italian guys, on the 2nd, they'll be at Tortuga Mexican Restaurant at 6 p.m. On the 15th, they'll be at Kuntai at 6 p.m. And on the 16th, you can find them at Tortuga Mexican Restaurant at 6 p.m. On the 2nd of September, P.A. and T. Roy shall be at Tortuga Mexican Restaurant at 6 to 8 on the 8th, they'll be at Brookings Elks Lodge, 7 to 9. On Friday, September 29th, they'll be at Checo Brewing, 6 to 8. And then on Saturday, September 30th, you can catch them at Kuntai Restaurant, 6 to 8. And that is the music schedule. All right, and now we'll get into some events happening at the Checo Library in Brookings. They have their weekly events here. Every Tuesday at 11 a.m., they've got story time. Small children and their parents meet up weekly in the children's section for stories, songs, and crafts. Then on Tuesdays at 1.30, it's Chair Yoga with Lynn Hart. Lynn Hart invites patrons of all ages to learn this gentle and healthy yoga practice. And then later on at 4.30 p.m. on Tuesdays, it's Easy Flow Yoga with Mavis. Join yoga instructor Mavis Reynolds for weekly Easy Flow Yoga class. This free class is suitable for all skill levels, but participants must be able to get up and down from the floor. And then every Wednesday at 10 a.m., they have their Brookings Core Response Outreach Hours. Do you need help with food, housing, or any other problems getting in the way of getting those things? Drop in the River Room to talk with a core staff member and get connected to support and resources. And then on Fridays, they have their Spanish Story Time. That's every Friday at 4 p.m. And that features Spanish language stories, games, and crafts in the children's section with Catalina. And if you have any questions or want to learn more about events coming up at the Checo Library, you can find them on Facebook and follow them for updates. You can visit their online events calendar at checkcolibrary.org, or you can always drop in there at 405 Alder Street in Brookings. Yeah, hey, and then Brookings Harbor Chamber of Commerce meet and greet mixer. This is happening on Thursday, September 7th from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. The location will be Cosmic Grind Espresso and Eats at 16370 Lower Harbor Road in Brookings. There will be free samples and happy hour specials goodie bags for new residents while supplies last. All right, and we were talking about that benefit concert yes. coming up. So there is going to be a benefit concert for the Smith River Fire Complex featuring local musicians. They're going to be supporting Del Norte County Search and Rescue. This is happening at the Elk Valley Casino Betty Green Event Center. This is going to be on the 31st of August from 5 to 9.30 p.m. It's going to feature performances by the Mighty Steelheads, Cut It Like the Kings, The Way Outs, Bob Tiernan, and Steve Berg. Donations will benefit the Del Norte Search and Rescue. 
If you'd like to make a donation online, you can go to gofundme.com forward slash F forward slash volunteer dash search dash and dash rescue dash Smith dash complex dash fires. I'm sure you can look for it on Facebook and you can also search for the cause on GoFundMe as well. Yeah, some of those are really long, <laughs> uh-huh. but they'll so, pop up real easy when you get on. Go ahead and search for it on there. Yeah. And hey, now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Hey, there are a few quotes from comedian actor Bill Murray. He was born on the 21st of September in 1950. He says, I go home and stay there. I wash and scrub up each day, and that's it. One month, I actually grew a mustache just so I could say that I did something. <laughs> he says, don't think about your errors or failures. Otherwise, you'll never do a thing. He says, movie acting suits me because I only need to be good for 90 seconds at a time. (laughs) And he goes, I'm a nut, but not just a nut. There you go. Hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Bill Murray. Yeah, with Mm -hmm. Cousin Bruce. Till next week, have a great one. (laughs) I'm a nut, but not just a nut. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Special nut. Good old Bill. (laughs) I love him. (laughs) Hey, the fifth annual Turtle Rock and Grass Music Fest is coming up on the 8th and 9th of September. Join them as they wind the summer down with an epic beach party on the southern Oregon coast. They're featuring the John Doe Boys, the Mighty Steelheads, the Spence Bros, A.A. Shania Twain Tribute, Cut It Like the Kings, Freaky Hernandez, the Shark Tones, the Green Trees, Fleetwood Back, and Rogue Strings. Bring your camp chair, some friends and family, and experience a fun adventure in beautiful Gold Beach. For tickets and two-day passes, you can get them at TurtleRockFestival2023.com. There you go. Yeah. Hey, and Elk Valley Casino and Coastal Hospice are presenting Comedy for a Cause featuring Kermit Appio on the 9th, 7 p.m. Coastal Hospice is dedicated to providing quality, compassionate, holistic care to our patients and their family at home, supporting and honoring personal choices during illnesses and at the end of life. At Coastal Hospice, they take a holistic approach to care. In fact, they require that all their staff take a holistic approach to health care. They strive to be kind, empathetic, supportive, and understanding in order to achieve positive outcomes in every interaction as they grow and expand programs and services to meet the needs of the community. Silent auction items will include the Rolling Stones guitar, the Amazing Spider-Man photo, Willie Mays photo, Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas Masters flag, Michael Jordan Bulls jersey, Muhammad Ali boxing glove, Fairmount getaway to Maui, all-inclusive trip to Los Cabos, signed Raiders football helmets and display case, and signed LeBron James photo. And if you didn't think that was enough, they got and more put on there too. And I'm just sitting there going, wow, somebody had a connection to a connection. I want to I want to know like who their fixer is. Like, yeah, seriously. because I mean, man, I mean, a Michael Jordan Bulls jersey, give me a break. Muhammad Ali boxing glove. <laughs> Come on. I mean, some of these, uh, yeah, but wow. Okay. That's, yeah. That's you intense. know, she, a Rolling Stones guitar. Give me I, a, jeez. Again, I say yeah, intense. Yeah, whoever it is. Kudos <laughs> to whoever did that. All yeah. Right, be ready to bid. Yeah, be ready to bid Ooh, big time. Yeah. yeah. All right. And the Calvary Chapel, located at 29935 Harbor Way in Gold Beach, is hosting a first responders appreciation dinner. Police, EMS, fire, and sheriff personnel are invited. Please give us an opportunity to serve you. This is hosted on the 9th of September from 5 to 7 p.m. They ask that you RSVP in advance. You can call 541-247-2242. Yeah, and then the Manly Art Center is presenting Magdalena Heiberg's Art Exhibit Opening Reception. Manly Art Center announces the opening reception for the September Art Exhibit held Saturday, September 9th, 2023 from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m at the Manly Arts Center located at 433 Oak Street in Brookings. The exhibit on display from September 5th through September 30th features the photography of Magdalena Heibergs. Born and raised in Leuven, Belgium, Magdalena and her four siblings grew up in an environment where nature and adventure travel through Europe played a big role in their lives. Her father was an environmental activist, a nature guide, and an amateur photographer. Years later, these seeds sown in her childhood would start to blossom. She says, looking back, I now realize how my father's love for nature and his camera seeped into my very being. The journey to becoming a photographer started at the Daytona Beach Community College, Florida, where she took a black and white photography course. From that launching point, Magdalena became an active photographer whose work was featured in shows throughout Central Florida. And in following years, Magdalena spent many long summers traveling and photographing in southern France. Yeah. All right. All right. Very cool. Yeah. Very talented. 
And now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right, good day, cat. Good day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of weird history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know the Teflon and matches were created by accident? It's true. And here's the story. You might not recognize it by name, but Teflon is a synthetic polymer used to make everything from nonstick cooking pans to nail polish. And though it's a genius invention that changed the way we cook, clean, and groom, the man who discovered the product, Roy J. Plunkett, did so completely by accident. The scientist was working at the DuPont Company's Jackson Laboratory in 1938, researching refrigerants, which helped to supply air conditioning and refrigeration. Well, when he noticed that some of the gas had turned into a white powder, well, after some testing, Plunkett concluded that the substance was heat resistant with low surface friction, giving it the perfect properties for its many uses we see today. And in 1826, chemist John Walker discovered what are now matchsticks when he accidentally scraped a wooden stick he had been using for stirring chemicals against his hearth at home, and it caught a light. He perfected the chemical formula and sold his first box of friction mattress at his shop on the 7th April 1827. Walker's friction lights, as he called them, were originally made out of cardboard, but eventually he switched over to using wooden splints and sandpaper. You might say Walker and his invention was a match made in heaven. Oh, I hope you enjoy this week's bit of history with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. That's very interesting. Very Modern interesting. technology. Like, well, you believe that? I just burnt my house down. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All righty. Well, well yeah. moving well, on yeah. here. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> oh, we don't want to talk about that. Yeah. The Del Norton Tribal Lands Community Food Council is having a harvest festival. This is going to happen at the Crescent City Food Forest. That's at 883 West Washington Boulevard in Crescent City. It's going to happen on the 10th of September from noon to 4. It's going to feature local food, local vendors, live music, a beer garden, arts and crafts, an obstacle course, kids' activities, and more. Good times. Yes, indeed. And Forb Castle Books is presenting poetry reading with Billy Ruth Furucci. On the 14th, 6.30 p.m., Billy Ruth is a poet, songwriter, silk artist, and Spanish teacher who lives in Brookings, Oregon. In 1985, she developed the Transformation Wheel and has facilitated original workshops in Maui, Moscow, Santa Cruz, Denver, Coeur d'Alene, and Brookings as Angelita Transformation Training. For more info on this, you can contact Michael Spring at 541-450-1115. And Billy Ruth is also a, yeah, she's she's a known person in this uh, town, that's yeah. for sure. Yes, yeah, in, absolutely. Uh, in society, everybody knows Billy Ruth. <laughs> All right, the Del Norte County Fairgrounds is having oh, something different here, Paranormal yeah. Cirque 2. This is going to be on September 15th, running through the 18th, and tickets are available at eventbrite.com. Immerse yourself in a world of thrills, chills, and suspense as you experience a paranormal journey like no other. Under this clown castle, the black and red big top tent, acrobats of the air, illusionists, freaks, mysterious creatures, and all the elements that make one think of a, quote, normal circus, but that of normal has very little. A new show with breathtaking implications, always poised between fun and the most uninhibited fear that will transport you to a dark world inhabited by creatures with incredible circus art abilities. A crazy yet fun fusion between circus, theater, and cabaret in perfect harmony with the evolution of a show that brings you back to when we dream and when we had nightmares and fantasies. Scare, encompass, amuse, and surprise are the ingredients for a mixture of emotions impossible to forget. This is truly a paranormal experience like no other. Again, what? tickets are available at eventbrite.com. That's right. That's going to be wild. <laughs> and we have a PSA here from Meals on Wheels. They are looking for volunteers. They are in need particularly of volunteer drivers. They deliver about 75 hot meals daily to homebound residents that can't get to the Checo Activity Center for the daily meals that are served there. They have both a harbor route and a Brookings route. This is a perfect opportunity for anyone out there who wants to give back to the community and be a friendly face and deliver a hot meal and a little kindness to local homebound residents. Whether you're interested in doing a day, a week, or a month of service, all volunteers are welcome. You can contact Debbie at 
9797 to get involved. That's all right. Hey, and the Brookings Harbor Boy Scouts of America are scouting for new troop members still. Boys and girls are invited. I'd like to get this out because we want to get that going. In fact, I'm going to touch bases with them and maybe get them on down here again, promote some more and see how they're doing. But Troop 32 is one of the Oregon's oldest scout troops with a long history in the community. Formed prior to World War II, the troop produced its first Eagle Scout in 1947 and as of today has helped a total of 44 scouts attain this prestigious rank. Troop 4032 is Brookings' first female scout troop, founded in 2019, following the transition from the Boys Scouts of America to Scouts BSA, allowing girls to join and participate in the scouting for the first time in history. Troop 32 and Troop 4032 are now accepting new scouts as well as adults interested in volunteering. Scouts are able to join the troops from 5th grade to age 17. Adults are able to volunteer as long as they're over 21 years old and are able to pass a background check and willing to spend about an hour and a half completing a youth protection training course. Now, they meet at the mm-hmm. Scout Hall from 7 to 8.30 p.m. every Monday night, except on holidays. You can come meet the troops and learn more about what Scouts can help you achieve. Scout Hall is located at 414 Azalea Park Road in Brookings. Troop 32 Scoutmaster is Mark Hagland at 541-661-2749. And Troop 4032 is Scoutmaster Rebecca Wilson. You can call her at 707-951-3647. Let's keep the Scouts a-going. That's what I got to say. Yeah. All right, and then there are game nights happening at the Whimsical Griffin. They're located at 615 Checo Avenue by the Redwood Theater. It's happening twice a week now. It's Tuesdays and Fridays from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Features Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, and a selection of board games. Yes, indeed, and we got one more here. Brian Scott Gallery Monthly Artist for this month of uh, September is Brian Gibbons. Brian began drawing with pencil and ink pen at an early age, inspired by comic book and fantasy artists of the day. Brian also creates underwater paintings of ocean floor and fauna and sea creatures and wood and mixed media pieces depicting neighborhood scenes from an era gone by. Brian's work is displayed on an ongoing basis at the gallery. For more information about the gallery, visit brianscottgallery.com or you can call 541-412-8687. And the gallery is open Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that is it. We got no more. We made it through another show. (laughs) Uh (laughs) We made it through. Okay. Yes, indeed. So, hey, uh, hope you all get out there and have some fun. And remember, uh, before we go, I want to give a shout out to support local businesses. Remember to always shop local. And it's time to close out this week's show. Before we go, I want to give a shout out to our fearless producer, Brother Tom, for all his great work making us look and sound good on the radio. I want to thank you all for tuning into this week's Inside Report. And please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. You can also catch the Fantastic Show podcast, including the Insider Report at KCIW.org. And while you're there, check out the live streaming as well. Hey, until next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And we are signing off. Keep it real and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll we'll see see you out there. there. Bam! Bam! Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.